Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Ryan Rice. Today I want to talk to you guys about how to measure your fish for competition and what brand board, measuring board you should get. So as far as the brand measuring board you should get, I suggest you getting a catch board. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. They make a polycarbonate version and also an all aluminum version like this. If you have the money, get the all aluminum version if you can because the polycarbonate carbonate is okay, but I just think the, the aluminum one, once you buy it once, you're done for life. Now I have the 32 inch long board just because I use this for saltwater fishing when I'm measuring my redfish if I do some saltwater competition. So I got the longer board. But if you're just gonna strictly fish largemouth bass, then get the 28 inch version, which takes four inches off this. But with this longer board, it actually helps because when you measure your fish, you wanna rest your board on an angle like this. This way, when the fish goes down, you know the face down to the board uh, or the nose to the edge of the bump here it forces their mouth closed and that's how you want to do it so when I get a fish I'm going to show you how I do it but this is the brand I suggest you get uh, they make it in all different colors and you can customize it like I got you know my name on the top here and I got RJM fishtails over here and I got RJM fishtails on the outside here. I didn't give them my logo to put in there, but they could do that as well. And like I said, these aluminum ones are nice because you buy it once and you're done. Also two from Catch, they make this identifier label uh, holder thing that you can stick on the outside and it slides back and forth. And I like this version just because it, it, you know, you can flip it down when you're done and then you can flip it up when you need to measure your fish and you can slide it around. So if your fish is short, you can slide it down here and it, the identifier is always on your board and you're not trying to fumble to find it or it's all the way over here. This thing slides back and forth real easy and you can move it around, you know, depending on the length of your fish so you have your identifier in the actual picture. You know, one thing I do as well is I'll dunk the board in the water and that helps cool it down or technically warm it up when it's cold or hot because if you put a fish on a board and it's 100 degrees out and the water temperature is like 80, this board gets really, really hot in the sun. So you're gonna end up like, you know, you'll give it, you know, you're actually gonna burn the fish and it's gonna flop all over the place. And you know, it's gonna make them not stay on the board as easy. So you always wanna cool your board and you always wanna warm your board up when you're, you know, measuring a fish. After you get the hook out of the fish's mouth, next thing you wanna do, like I said to you before, is you want to dunk your board if it's cold out or hot you want to place your board on an angle a lot of times i use my feet to hold it up and then you want to get your camera ready on your phone and i usually hold the fish if it's going to be out of the water for a long time i will uh put it in the net let it sit in the water but you can see the board being on an angle most of the time there we go it forces the fish's mouth to close and then I keep two hands on it and I get the tail kind of laying flat and I'll keep one hand on it. Make sure the identifier is in the picture. I'll take one picture with my hand on the fish. Make sure he's uh, being pretty uh, calm or she. And then I'll take my hand away and I'll take a bunch of pictures after that. Now I got a little bit of a shadow line on that. So once I get a couple pictures, and if I got a shadow line, I'll make sure I bring that fish up to make sure it's out of the shadow for its mouth because you want to make sure the mouth is closed. And then I'll bring it up level. And I'll take some more pictures again. So this fish is 14 and 3 quarters. So 14 and 3 quarters. And then I get the fish back in the water. So that's it. Like I said, you can slide this identifier around as needed. Put the board on an angle, make sure you dump it, cool it off, or warm it up. And that's it, guys. That's all That's all you have to do to measure your, take a picture and measure your fish, and then now you upload this onto the Fishing Chaos. You know, double check all your pictures, make sure they're good, and you don't have any, uh, you know, pictures with the mouth open, or your hand covering the gill plate, any of that. That's why you wanna take multiple pictures to make sure you have enough Go back through them, make sure they're good, and submit your best picture out of them all. 
Uh, if you're uncertain about it, you can submit multiple pictures. I've done that before plenty of times. You know, also too, if you want for your phone itself, I use the Rogue Fishing uh, Tether and it's tethered off to my life jacket, but it's up to you. It's a good option to keep your phone from being dropped in the water. Uh, I know some people don't like the tethers, but I've gotten used to it and it actually has saved my phone from going into the water once. So it was worth the purchase. I'll put that to you know, the link in the description. I'm sorry, and when I was on the water, I forgot to show you how to upload it to Fishing Chaos. So you're gonna to wanna to download the Fishing Chaos app, which I have under like a whole fishing folder. So you're gonna open Fishing Chaos. You know, once you have it downloaded and you're, you know, you're set up, you gotta find the tournament that you're fishing in. So we were fishing in the Catch-22 tournament for 23, which is this one right here. You know, you want to open that. You want to open that app, and then once you're in that app, you can see that you have uh, your identifier that you can go to. So if you did pay for it, the twenty-two dollars, my phone's not working. You can view your identifier. So the identifier is twenty-two N twenty-three. So that's where you find your identifier. But to upload your fish, you can see you have submit catch. Hit submit catch. And, you know, I have the, uh, you know, Catch-22 is black bass, so you got to put your length in. So once you know the length of your fish, let's just say 12 inches, right? Then you have to add a photo. Either you take a video, I mean, you either take a live picture then, but I suggest just taking a, uh, you know, a photo of your fish, multiple photos like I showed you. Go from your photos, and you're going to want to select the fish that you want to put in and you can see it shows up on the app so this to double check your picture there's a magnifier right there you can hit plus all right then it brings up the picture then you could zoom in and make sure that you're well we did 12 inches but I, you know, my last fish was uh 14 and three quarters uh you want to make sure that the picture is accurate you can see that the tail's just touching the three quarter mark right before the 15. And you want to make sure the fish's mouth is closed, etc. So that's the last fish I put in. All right. So once you're good with your photo on the app, you got your black bass selected and you got your length put in accurately, which it was 14 and three quarters. I'm not going to do it because I did it already. I want them to say, why are you sitting submitting the same fish twice? Sorry. I'm trying to do this while I film at home which i'm better filming on the water believe it or not than sitting at home and doing it so you put in your uh thing so i got 14.75 so you know your fish whether it's 14 and a quarter 14 and a half 14 and three quarters you have to do decimal points and that can get people into trouble too because you know you don't do 14 one two or 14 seven five you got to make sure you put that point in there if not, you're submitting 1,475 inches. So, you know, for 14 and three quarters, you do 14.75, which equates to 14 and three quarters. And then you hit the submit button. That is it. So it's very simple. Make sure you, you know, you select your proper tournament. You know, when you go in here, you have your dashboard. Your dashboard tells you all the uh, things that you are currently in or have done recently. Uh, you know, you have your name, etc., your catch log, uh, charter, you know, your trail and club. So if you go to trail and club, you know, we're KBF. I'm just kind of giving you a little brief overview of Fishing Chaos while I got it open. You know, so KBF. So if I want to check where I'm at right now in the 2023 Challenge Series, I hit that. So overall, I am in... I got to keep getting pushed down because I need to start fishing. I'm in 18th place overall nationwide right now with 1,806 points. But as soon as I get on the water for one day for January and actually catch fish for the monthly challenge, I'm going to jump back up there because right now it's only giving me 60 points. I'm not gonna get, getting into all the details about that right now. I just really wanted to show you how to submit your fish, but at the same time, I also get distracted like I always do. I want to go into more depth of everything. <laughs> we can do a whole other video of fishing chaos, but that's pretty much it. So go to your dashboards are really the easiest way to find out any of the uh, challenges or, or competitions you're in. You know, you got the Fish Ops Catch-22 Challenge Series, which we fished today. And, you know, once again, you have to hit your Submit Catch. 
black bass, put your length in. So if it's 12 and a quarter inches, you do 12.25. Add photo, go from your photos because you want to take multiple pictures. Like I said, I don't have a 12, but let's just select the fish. You select the fish, you can zoom in on it, make sure it's good by hitting the magnifier glass, zoom in. You can see this one, the tail is touching this over the 16 inch mark, so that was a 16 inch fish. And you can just double check your thing. And then if everything's all right, so you got 12 and a quarter and your fish is 12 and a quarter on the board, your picture looks good. I always suggest in your photos, if you're taking a picture and it goes vertically, it's fine. But I always go back in and edit the photos on the iPhone and turn that picture, you know, basically landscape mode. So it's, you know, side to side. This way, it's probably easier for the judges. I'm sure it really doesn't make a difference if the picture is vertical. I just like to have all my pictures turned sideways. So I go into my photos and I hit edit and change the orientation of the photo. So all my photos, now as I'm in a rush, I'm submitting a bunch of fish, but I like to have all my photos, you know, basically horizontal. So they're all the same. They get the same, you know, uh, some submitted fish from me. They all look the same as far as the pictures. I'm not, you know, upside down, left, left, right. You know what I mean? So I try to, uh, uh, keep all my fish facing the same way. You can up, you know, check the box and upload a reduced quality. You know, that's when the reception's really poor, but I usually, I just, if I can't get my fish submitted on the water, because of bad reception. I hate doing poor quality photos. I've never done it and I plan on not doing it. You know, if you ask Chad, he even, he'll even tell you that if you're off the water, as soon as you get your cell service down the road, pull over to the, you know, the side of the road safely and upload your fish. They'll know from the GPS tracking on this that you took that picture on the water and you can send, you know, if it's like a, you know, a trail series and it's a more serious tournament, just shoot Chad a text and say, Chad, I, I couldn't upload the fish on the water. Uh, you know, his number's on his website and all over the place. So you can text him and say, listen, I was on the water, Chad. I'm sorry, I could not get the fish uploaded. My battery is dying, etc." I'm uploading them now on the side of the road as soon as they got cell service. That is your safest bet as far as if you're having a problem. But I don't like doing that reduced quality uh, photo. Now, if you really need to get uploaded on the water and you just want to, you know, get it get it uploaded, I'm sure they could, you know, go in and check it and make sure that it's still a good picture. If not, they'll, uh, you know, they'll shoot you a text or a phone call and saying this picture is no good. But, you know, that's the best way to do it. If you can't get it uploaded on the water, as soon as you get down the road, Pull over safely and upload your fish. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. You know, the best thing to do is to, uh, you know, if you haven't done this before, is start with the Challenge Series, or now they have the Knucklehead Series, and, uh, you know, which is a low dollar amount. That's a. These are good chances for you to practice taking pictures of fish, making sure everything's good, take multiple pictures, and it's a good way to practice is to do the Challenge Series or the Knucklehead Series. And get used to using this. Figure I'd turn around and talk to you guys so you're not just looking at my phone. Uh, but the, you know, I've been doing this now for going on six years, but really heavy the past year with the tournaments. Once you get this down, I mean, once I get that fish, you know, the hook out of the fish's mouth from the lure, etc., I can get that fish on the board, my picture taken, and that fish back into the water. If I'm not having any issues with my phone or with the fish itself, I can get that done probably within 30 seconds to 45 seconds, you know, maybe the minute the longest. I can get that fish on the board, multiple pictures taken, make sure the, you know, the fish's mouth is closed, etc. You get really quick at doing this. And the more you do it, it's just like anything else. Practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, it becomes second nature. It makes it extremely easy to do this. And it takes all the nerves out of it when you're into a real serious tournament. You know, you're not thinking about that the whole time. All you're doing is concentrating on catching fish because you have this part of it down pat and there's no nerves involved. So, like I said, this is the time to do it. Do it in the Challenge Series. Do it in the Knucklehead Series. If you plan on fishing Trail Series and getting really serious about this because you will be scrutinized if you screw up. And it's, you know, real, we're getting into a lot of dollars now for this kayak bass fishing stuff. It's serious. So you want to make sure you have this down, that you have no nerves involved on game day, if you want to call it that. You know that you catch that fish, you get that, that fish on the board, and you take that picture and you move on and keep catching more fish. That's the, that's the, 
the nature of the beast. You have to be good at taking pictures because we don't take these fish back to the landing. We take the pictures live and get those fish right back into the water. It's healthier for them and everything else. So you have to get good at measuring the fish on these boards and this just be second nature for you. So I'll put the link in the description for the catch board. Like I said, you can get the polycarbonate. It's a lot less money, but I, if you have the money or save up for it, I would suggest getting the aluminum version of this board because you buy it once and you're done and you can engrave it and make it really cool and customize it the way you like. So I hope you like this little video. If you do hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the water. Thanks for watching.